Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to bypass Windows authentication. Now, uh, the reason I'm making this video is because I get a lot of questions, a lot of personal questions through email and social networks, where, you know, people ask me, how do I bypass Windows authentication, which is essentially bypassing uh, the login screen on a, a, a desktop, a, a laptop running Windows. And, you know, the, the versions could vary, but... Uh, and, you know, the reasons behind this could, could be nefarious or legitimate, and I try to respond to them as best as I can, but I get quite a bit, so I thought, why not address this video right now? Um, so the tool I'm going to be showing you and the, the tool that personally I think is the best in regards to resolving this issue is called Conboot. Now, uh, Conboot and I have a history that, you know, is it goes back quite a while because I was actually introduced to this tool during my teenage years by a, a, an older friend of mine. He actually gave it to me on a disc and he told me, hey, you know, you can just boot from this drive and you'll be able to bypass Windows passwords. In that time, I think it was Windows 7, I believe, that uh, where I'd actually experimented with this. So what happens is you boot from the conboot drive uh, and then that loads up a conboot loader, which performs its changes in just a few seconds, and then it restarts into Windows. Uh, and when you restart it into Windows, uh, you don't need to enter a password to log into any account. All you need to do is just hit enter without typing in a password, and it will bypass the authentication. Now, once you're into the account, you can then change the password to whatever you want, so on and so forth, right? Now, the important thing to note here is I'm not making this video to promote anything illegal. As I said, this uh, th this tool can be used for good uh, for, for both good and bad, and I get emails you know on both sides of the spectrum. So I'm going to be focusing on the target audience of system administrators and people who actually need to get into a system that they own, and you know it contains vital information, right? So Conboot uh, currently works on all versions of Windows and Mac. I'm not going to be covering how to use it on Mac because I'm not a Mac OS guy. I think the only time I used Mac was once in uh, when I was a teenager and that was again a friend's laptop and it was just weird. Um, so I, I, I purchased a license, a personal license a few days ago because I believe this is a tool that, you know, you, you really need to have. Um, so you can see the supported operating systems is Windows XP to Windows 10, which is crazy to think given that Windows 10 is started as one of the most secure versions of Windows ever released. Um, so let me talk about the, the authentication or the bypass types here. So you can see on a personal license, you can bypass local passwords. This means uh, user accounts that are not linked to a Microsoft account. They're called local accounts. You then have the online password bypass, which is not existent in the personal license. Uh, these are accounts that are, are linked to a Hotmail or a Microsoft account that require you know two-way authentication. Uh, and you then have the ability to create a local admin account, which is great. That works for me. Now, if you are in, in a corporate environment where you are going to be using this in a company, then it's recommended that you actually get the commercial license. So again, that gives you everything that you'll need. It works on Windows XP to Windows 10, local password bypass, uh, online password bypass, etc. And uh, you can go, go about installing this on both a USB drive or a disk drive. So you can boot from a USB drive, which is the preferred method right now. Or, or and you get an ISO file for that and you can actually burn it onto a disk drive. So uh, given that I don't have any Windows uh, op Windows machines, physical Windows machines, I can test this on because I migrated uh, to Linux. Uh, I have I've been testing this out with virtual machines and a few of my friends old uh, old, old workstations. So this is the documentation page and you can go through it. The link to this will be in the descriptions and it actually goes about explaining what it does and stuff. If you want me to make a video explaining what's happening, do let me know in the description section. So it gives you a list of all the all the versions of Windows and this and whether or not they're supported. You have uh, BIOS and UEFI support for Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10, I believe. Um, and then gives you the differences between the personal and commercial version. You have uh, tutorials, how to install it onto USB, so on and so forth. I'm not going to be covering that. I'm sh simply showing you how this works, right? So I already have my ISO file saved on my desktop and I'm going to be testing this out on virtual machines, right? So I'm just going to open up VirtualBox here and uh, you can see that I have uh, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows Server 2012, uh, pretty much the, the, the de facto standards for each of these deployment scenarios. So Windows 10 is mostly the corporate uh, environment. Windows 10 is a uh, personal home use, stuff like that. Windows Server 2012 is, again, deployed uh, as a server or the de facto standard for Windows-based deployments. 
Uh, so we'll start off with Windows 7. Now uh, I'm just going to restore to a clean uh, slate here. So I'll just call this a clean install uh, because I was actually making a few changes there. Uh, and I'll get, uh, we'll, actually, we'll actually get rid of this right over here because yeah, I don't want that previous version, right? So uh, the process is very simple in a virtual machine. You simply just want to load the ISO file as a disk. And if you're doing this on a physical machine, you would use the installer that they would send you uh, after you've made the purchase. Uh, and I'm, by, by, no, by no means am I promoting them. This is just a tool that I believe every system administrator and everyone who you know, does run into issues like this should have. So you want to go into your settings and into storage. And uh, you want to look look for your disk image uh, here. And uh, for some reason, it tells me I can't actually specify this, which is really weird. Um, well, that's because it's in a saved state. So let me just start that right now. And uh, we can actually, so I'm using an evaluation version of Windows here. And uh, I will just shut down. All right, so I'll just shut that down and we can actually load this, uh, this ISO file the con boot ISO file. So we just need to load from it, boot from it, and then it's going to it's going to do all its changes. And then once we're done with that, uh, it's going to restart and we can log in uh, without any password. So just to prove that authentication does work, I'm, doing, I'm just going to boot in and show you that this account does have a password. So I'll do that right now. We'll just wait for it to start. Uh, there we are. So I'll try using no password it gives me the the simple error that we usually get the username and password is incorrect i'll try hinting a random password here again tells me the username and password is correct i'll enter the correct password you can see that it works and uh, i will shut this down now so we can actually load that iso file all right so we want to go into settings uh you want to take a look at your set at your system settings and make sure that your optical disk drive has the first priority in the boot order sequence over here uh, or you can actually use F12 to manually boot into the drive. You want to go into your storage. Um, there we are, storage. And you want to go into a disk drive selector here. And I'm going to specify, I'm just going to choose, and I already have it loaded here. So it's saved on my desktop. So con, uh, con boot CD ISO. I'm going to choose that. And uh, I think that's pretty much all we need to do. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Start. And I'll boot from the ISO. So F12, there we are. And I'll say CD ROM. Hit enter. So there we are. Con boot is starting. It's just going to take a few seconds. It's, uh, it's even going to detect whether you're running this in BIOS UEFI. There we are. Dummy BIOS detected. It's going to try and fix the entries and it's now going to restart into Windows. Now, this is very important because in order for you for this to happen or for you to bypass the, the login again, you need to actually boot into con boot every time you want to bypass the password. So once you log in right now, you need to change the password. That's something to keep in mind. So you can see if I just hit enter, I can now log in without any password. And that is just brilliant. Like this stuff used to blow my mind, uh, you know, when I was like a teenager and we were doing this to, to you know, computers in our computer lab in school. Uh, it was, you know, awesome stuff. Imagine doing this to the administrator's computer, which I'll show you in a second, right? So that was essentially what I wanted to demonstrate, right? So once you're done, I'm just going to shut it down here and I'll move on to Windows Server 2012. And there are a few issues I want to resolve with Windows 10. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restore the, I'm just going to say restore and I'll restore this to a vanilla state. Okay, let's talk about Windows Server 2012. Uh, again, the same thing, this is going to be, uh, this is also going to be the case for Windows 8 and 8.1 because they had a very similar architecture. So system, uh, I'll just unclick uh, floppy and make sure the, that the optical drive has the first priority here. Uh, processor, we'll keep that as it is. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll then go into storage, similar to what we just did. And I'll swap out the VirtualBox guest editions for Conboot and hit choose. But before that, I should actually show you that authentication does work. Yeah, I think I should because many of you will be in the comments telling me that uh, I have set no password, even though that's not possible. So this is Windows Server. I believe I'd restored it to its uh, original state. Um, in any case, let's just see if it, uh, we can actually log in without an issue here. Um, there we are. Uh, so I'll just say input, control, alt, delete, and uh, turn into the password here. There we are. So you can see that authentication does work. Um, so what I'll do now is I will shut down um, and we'll say shut down and hit other. Uh, don't know what error I got there, but um, we can just go into settings now and we say storage. Um, 
and uh, we'll choose this and we'll go into con boot ISO here and choose this and hit OK and I'll start it and again I'll boot uh, I'll boot from the CD-ROM so option C that's going to load up con boot and uh, we'll let this uh, run and it's going to start modifying a few bits of, of software here which again if you want me to cover how it works I'll, I'll gladly make a video on that so it's going to restart into Windows Server now. Again, input, control, alt, delete, and I'll try and log in without any password. And there we are. So uh, it essentially bypasses <laughs> any password that exists, even though the account is an administrator account. So you can see the potential damage that you can do and the potential good that you can do. Uh, you know, a, a common scenario that I usually run into that many people contact me about is that they run an organization and they hired an IT guy to actually set up a Windows server for them that was running and handling their mail and stuff like that. And uh, they leave and they forget the password and they contact this IT administrator and they don't even remember the password. And they're like, how do I get into this? Because it has data that's very important. And I usually point them towards this tool and it, it, they're able to sort out the issue immediately. Right. So let me also restore this to its original state because I usually use this for a lot of work. And now let's talk about Windows 10. Right. So uh, Windows 10 has been giving me a lot of issues, especially uh, because I think it's it's in a virtualized environment. And because I don't have any physical installations to test this on yet, I haven't been able to do it successfully. So uh, by, by the way, I also have the documentation page for Conboot, as I said here. Uh, and it seems there is a way to actually bypass this using the sticky keys feature. But again, as I said, this will work on Windows 10 if you actually use a USB or anything like that. Um, so there we are, Windows 10 is starting up. We'll just wait for this to start up and I can actually prove that I have authentication enabled here. Um, so there we are. Uh, Windows 10 is, as usual, going to be slow. Um, I think Windows 10 Enterprise is a much better version, but um, there we are. So we'll just wait for the login screen here. So again, if I try and log in with any password, it gives me the error. And if I log in with the correct password here, um it, it allows me to log in so what i'll do is i'll just shut this down now and we can actually try and load the con boot iso file so as i said uh, uh, it hasn't worked for me in a virtualized environment and uh, they actually cover this in the documentation i actually think i read it uh, uh, what's uh, the, the system requirements here um, so there we are. Disk encryption is not supported. Uh, the secure boot must be disabled. Tablets are not supported. Multiple operating systems installed on the target computer, which is dual booting, are not supported. No th third party loaders are supported. That includes Drive Droid and, and others. Kernel debugger, virtualization software, VMware, Kimo, VirtualBox is not supported. So I think that's where the issue I'm running into is here. Uh, however, it is funny that I was able to actually do this on the other versions of Windows. So I'll probably make another video covering on how I do this to a physical uh, machine. Um, so what I'll do now is we'll go into settings, we'll go into um, storage, same thing, and uh, we'll specify the con boot um, drive here or the ISO file, sorry. And let me just make sure my settings are set up correctly. There they are. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, we can then start it up. And I'll then boot from my CD-ROM here. And uh, we'll give that a few seconds to start up. So it actually executes without any issues. It's just that I'm unable to log in plain, you know, full stop, you know. So um, so we'll, we'll, we'll let this start up. So going back to the scenarios that I was talking about, uh, you know, you can use this for a whole load of illegal things, uh, getting into your spouse's computer or your know, friend's computer, into administrator computers. But... Uh, I'll give you an example of where this is really helpful. So if I hit submit, you can see it tells me uh, password is incorrect. If I hit the correct password, it also tells me that that's incorrect. So it's been a real bummer for me. And I've been I've actually asked one of my friends to bring over one of their Windows 10 laptops that they don't use. So I can actually try this out. So I'll probably make an addendum to this video. Uh, but I believe it works. Uh, you guys can test this out. It's a fantastic tool. I just wanted to share this with you so you guys are aware of this. For those of you who have been asking me, so many times on email. I'll also be covering how to recover passwords on Linux, uh, which is much more straightforward. You don't need a third party tool at all. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, I recently had a scenario where a family or someone from a family contacted me uh, telling me that 
their father had been deceased or had recently been deceased and uh, his laptop had some very, very important information regarding a lawsuit that they had ongoing and uh, they were unable to get into it because he didn't tell anyone the password. So uh, they actually asked me, you know, to actually help with this. And I set up Conboot for them and I get it. I got it all done. I actually purchased a license, uh, you know, specifically for that. And I helped them do it. And it was just amazing. So you can see the, the, the potential use cases, both good and bad. But as I said, this video is primarily just focused on the demonstration aspect of it. Uh, I don't think and I, I can actually demonstrate how to install it via USB. They already have the USB video here. It's essentially the installer you get when you make a purchase. You can get this software by, by other means. I do not recommend that. I'm just saying I personally was introduced to this tool by a friend. I'm not sure whether he got it legally, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your feedback regarding Conboot. If you have any other techniques that you'd use, etc. Stuff like that. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.